For number 10, now we're looking at population means, uh, two different populations. And we're going to test uh, using a hypothesis test and confidence intervals to determine if those population means are equal or not. And that's always our null hypothesis, is that the two mean values will be equal. And it tells us here that we're going to be testing that population 1 is greater than population 2 as our alternative. And so we can do this in StatCrunch here. Now what we have is um, we're testing means and we do not know the population standard deviation. We just have the sample standard deviation. So we have to use t-stats to samples. And we have the summary data. So I'm going to enter in that information from the table over here. Um, and I got that wrong. The sample size is 24. The sample mean is 46.3. And so I type that in for both samples. And the sample size. And the sample sizes can be different because these are independent samples. And we're doing a hypothesis test with greater than. U1 is greater than U2. Um, if you subtract the U2 from both sides, you get just like it's written here in StatCrunch. So hitting compute, we'll get our test statistic. We'll also get the p-value. Now since that p-value here it is larger than alpha, that means we do not reject the null hypothesis. There is insufficient evidence uh, to reject it. And we also want to uh, test this data the same way. We'll get the same results, just doing it a different approach with confidence intervals. So I'm going to go back here and edit what we have. So that same information from our table, but this time do a confidence interval. I'm going to do 99%. And you get the lower limit and the upper limit of uh, the confidence interval. And so enter that here, and like I said, that gives us the same conclusion that we would not reject our null hypothesis because um, the lower limit and the upper limit, zero is in between those. One's negative and one's positive, so zero's in between. And, and that's basically what our null hypothesis says, is that the two population means are equal, which means their difference would be zero. And so both the confidence interval and the hypothesis test with the p-value approach uh, make us reach the same conclusion to not reject the null hypothesis. For number 11, uh, it gives us the alternative that we're going to be working with. Our null is always that the two population means are equal. And so here's our data that we're going to be entering into StatCrunch. And we'll want to come to stat t-stats. We have two samples, and we have the summary data. So enter in our information. And so once we've typed in our sample information, we'll go down and make sure we have hypothesis test and our less than. And we're going to hit compute. And scrolling over, the p-value is 0 0.001. And so that is less than our level of significance, which when that's the case, we reject the null hypothesis. There is sufficient evidence to conclude that the alternative is true. For number 12, the situation in uh, this problem is we're testing whether a certain method called ramp metering it helps with the flow of traffic on the freeway. So and we want to know if it results in higher average, higher mean car speeds when we use ramp metering compared to when we have the ramp meters off. And so here are our sample, uh, the sample data from when we use the ramp meter and when we have the ramp meter off. And so we want to open that up in StatCrunch. And the first thing we want to do in StatCrunch is draw these box plots. And so if we actually go to graphs, uh, box plots, and we'll click on both of them. Um, you want to hold Control down um, so they're both selected as you do the clicking. So they're both over here. Um, you 
can then hit compute and you'll get the box plots drawn. Um, they are sideways here and they're vertical over in stack crunch but look at the numbers um, and our little key here so with it on it looks like we're having higher speeds when that ramp meter is on and the box is further up where the numbers are larger and with the ramp meter me metering off um, or lower speeds a little bit over 40 down to about I don't know 25 or so so find um, what matches that and select that for your for part A and then does there appear to be a difference in speeds and that was pretty clear that yes there did the whole on box was shifted higher than the off box so it does look like when the ramp meters on the data is showing that the speeds of the car is are a little bit faster outliers would be um, really long whiskers on one end or the other somewhere and we really don't see that um, the whiskers on the end of the boxes here are about the same on each side doesn't appear to be any outliers so are they effective in maintaining higher speed on the freeway does the ramp meter help the cars go faster so we're going to actually use a hypothesis test to reach a conclusion so our null is equality and our alternative here is going to be that with them on the speeds are faster they're greater than when the ramp meters are off so stats our t stats we have two samples and we have the data here um, ramp meters on and our second data is with them off and so we are checking for uh, the greater than and we hit compute and we're going to get our p-value then and round it to the correct number of decimal places as indicated and that is smaller than our level of significance and whenever that is the case we have enough evidence to reject the null and assume the high or the alternative hypothesis is true which in this case means there's enough evidence sufficient evidence to conclude that the speeds are faster when the ramp meters are on. So the ramp meters are effective, are effective in maintaining higher speeds on the freeway. For number 13, we're comparing the mean amount of bacteria between carpeted, carpeted rooms and uncarpeted rooms. And so we're going to gather two samples, one from each type of room, and see if those samples indicate that um, there's a difference between the mean number of bacteria in those two types and our hypothesis tests is what we want to go about doing we always assume with the null that those two means will be the same and we're determining whether carpeted rooms have more bacteria so our alternative would be that our carpeted rooms have greater a greater mean than our uncarpeted ones and so we want to get this data here in stack crunch and we don't have population standard deviation, so we're using T stats, two samples uh, with the data, carpeted rooms and uncarpeted. And so we're doing a hypothesis test, a greater than, and we hit compute. And so we get our p value back. And if that, and that is what needs to be compared to our significance level, which is 0.05. And so that is actually bigger than our level of significance. When that's the case, we do not have enough evidence to reject the null hypothesis. So we're not going to reject it, and there's not significant evidence to conclude that the alternative is true, which stated that the carpeted rooms have more bacteria than uncarpeted ones. For number 14, we're looking at the two populations are female and male, and uh, what percent of income they believe you should be uh, taxed on, individuals should pay income tax on. And so we're going to compare those two populations, male to female, and see if the mean, the means are different for how they feel about taxes. So we're going to open this in stack crutch, and we're going to start by drawing these side-by-side -side, uh, box plots. Now notice the female data, the column's called tax rate, and it's the same for the male. It's helpful to click up there and change those so you can distinguish um, which one's male and which one's female because when we draw these box plots 
You want to select both those columns, and if you hold control while you click on them, you need to make sure they both get over here. And then you hit Compute. Uh, if you didn't rename those columns, they would both just say tax right here. But now I can see that this one's clearly female, and this one is for the male data. And so it looks like the female data is showing slightly higher results. That box is higher up than the male data. And the median value is quite a bit higher up than the median value for the male data. And this scale is done vertically. And back here in uh, StatLab, we have to look at it horizontally. But look at these significant um, points here on the box plot. You can look at where the tails end up on the whiskers and then where the box starts and where the box ends and where that median value is. And there'll only be one answer that corresponds to those those numbers. Um, and we can also see this outlier up here. The males have a high outlier around 35. You should see that showing up um, in the correct box plot as well. There should be an outlier up there for the males. So the question here, does there appear to be a difference in the income tax rates between genders? And the data is showing that there does seem to be a difference. Um, the female box is higher up than the males, and that median is um, shows a lot higher in up, a uh, much larger number in the females than it is for the males. And then explaining why a hypothesis test may be used. Um, the things that we need to have, we'll check them all off here. Each sample size should be large. Uh, each sample size should be small relative to, to the size of its population. Each sample should be obtained independently. And each sample should be a simple random sample. So the only one we don't need to check here is that each sample has to have the same sample size. That's not a requirement. Um, we, that's only the case when we have dependent uh, samples. But in this situation, we just have uh, two samples, one of male and one of female. They don't have to be the same size. And so now we're actually going to do the hypothesis test. And so our null hypothesis is that those two means are going to be equal. We always have equality in the null. And then our alternative, we're just checking to see if they're not equal, if there's a difference between the two. So coming over here, I'm going to go to stat. T stats, we have two samples and we have the data. Uh, now, since the problem over here was listing males first and females second, that's why we've listed them in that order here as well. And so we'll want to do sample one as males and sample two as females. If you flip those around backwards, um, you'll actually get the same p value, but your T stat would be the opposite sign, the incorrect sign. So uh, when you hit compute, you get the T stat and the P value, and you want to enter those in. And looking at our P value, 0.377, that is quite a bit larger than our level of significance. And since that's the case, that means we do not have enough information to reject the null hypothesis. And so we can't conclude that the alternative is true, which means we cannot conclude that there's any difference in how the male and female population feels about the tax rates.